Okay, this is just a quick talk called uh, The Genetic Fallacy and Don't Fall For It. Okay, I'm currently reading a book on neurodegeneration, but it's the same in tons of textbooks I read, tons of research papers I read. The authors keep on emphasizing the genetic aspect of dementia. For example, genetic aspect of Parkinson's, genetic aspect of coronary artery disease. Um, and I just want to let you know, in case you haven't figured this one out already, that's mostly just BS, okay? There's something called the lamppost fallacy, to look under our streetlight fallacy, to look only where it's easy to look. But it's more than that. It's also research studies get done based on where the researchers think they'll find the grant money. A lot of scientists, you know, they're desperate to get money. And because of that, they're not seeking to really understand the disease or figure out the truth of the disease or really help the patient. They're just trying to figure out how can we get grant money? If we study the genetic aspect of this disease, we can get money. Because genetic causes are totally exaggerated because once you say something is genetic, you're basically saying there is nothing that a person can do. Therefore, they must take the pill or have the surgery. And what I can just tell you from, you know, I've been a doctor over 30 years, is hardly anything is genetic. Yeah, there's a couple rare genetic diseases. It is true that people are variable and some have slightly increased susceptibility to common disease, but those are usually quite minor. For example, if they got the ApoE4 genetic variant, they have a slightly increased risk of Alzheimer's, but it's a much, much bigger risk if they eat a high fat diet, if they smoke cigarettes, drink alcohol. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is there are variations of people being more vulnerable slightly to atherosclerosis, for example, but if they eat the right diet, they're going to be fine anyways. So I tell you that because you're going to hear genetic medicine, precision medicine, all these other things, and you know, it hasn't changed diet and health, what makes you healthy. Um, and <clears throat> all that genetic stuff is super rare. And even, you know, it used to be people thought, oh, family history is so important for cancer. Well, most of the reason why more than one person in the same family will get a certain type of cancer is usually because they shared the same risk factors. <clears throat> they both ate a high fat, high sodium diet or smoked cigarettes or worked at the same factory or something like that. So that's the point of this lecture. Hardly any disease is genetic or the genetic variations, they're present, but they're minor contributions. There's, sure, there's plenty of exceptions to what I just said, but in general, that is true.